Welcome everyone. We're back at One Earth Live with another great session, which we call like deepening the conversation and, and with all these great visionaries who are joining us today for this incredible event with so many people around the world joining from so many nations. And I'd like to introduce two incredible visionaries, two incredible visionaries who have devoted their life to bringing the global family together from all the different sectors. And we have Ben Bowler, who is the founder of Unity Earth. And we have John Raymer from The Compassion Games, also the founder of The Sign Network. And these two beloved brothers are doing great work in the world. And we're just gonna have a little bit of a fireside chat to get to know them and what they're doing. So I'm gonna start with you, Ben. Tell us a little bit about Unity Earth and, and about you know, what's, what's happening in your world. Thank you so much, Chris, and uh, yeah, it's great to be here with you and, and with Brother John uh, on this session for One Earth Life. Uh, what an exciting, what an exciting time. Um, Unity Earth has been building up over many years. It's actually a constellation of many change makers and leaders. We, we, don't, we don't refer to a founder of Unity Earth. Uh, we feel like more like it's founding us rather than the other way around. So it's really been a constellation of how many different elements have come together. Uh, out of the interspiritual movement, which itself was built upon the interfaith movement, and really that deep intercultural harmony uh, that's been worked at for such a such a long time, uh, in between traditions, from indigenous wisdom traditions right across to the world's religious traditions, and now the new emerging forms of spirituality. How do we hold a container that's big enough to really hold all of these things in a constellation of relationship? And that's been the journey. And it's really taken us right around the world um, since 2012 when we started with our own uh, Uday Festival in Thailand and have been building ever since then events at the United Nations uh, in 2016 to kick off the road to 2020 uh, back then. And then that's taken us to the outback of Australia, working with uh, one of the great privileges of my life to work with the Australian Aboriginal people and elders uh, in events there honouring uh, the oldest living culture on earth. And from there, to the African Union and the Rift Valley for Uday 2018 in Ethiopia, across India and Varanasi into the Holy Land, which just happened earlier in February this year. And these events essentially are bringing together indigenous leaders, religious leaders, spiritual leaders, visionaries, musicians, artists, NGOs and change makers through experiences in sacred places. Uh, and it's been an incredible way to build a, a community globally uh, where the diversity is, is clear. Uh, and yet the unity is, is something really palpable that everybody's feeling, that spiritual unity and that love that we have for one another across all of these divisions and across these, uh, you know, different um, colours and different, you know, cloaks that we wear in our cultures. So it's been an incredible journey and really all of it's been building up, as the name would suggest, the road to 2020. All of it's been building up to, to now this moment. Of course, nobody saw uh, what would happen with the, with the global pandemic and shutdown. And it's really accelerated, I think, uh, this movement of movements, Chris, to which we all belong, John, uh, yourself, and all of the different groups and organisations and musicians uh, and thought leaders that are represented here at One Earth Live. And it's, it's really accelerated that process now where unity on the planet isn't just a nice idea, uh, isn't just something to hear in song uh, and to dream about. Uh, it's something for us to realise. Uh, and so that's the journey that we're, we're, we're collectively on together. It's brought us to this moment. Uh, and Unity Earth has been uh, you know, uh, um, on a journey towards that over the last handful of years. And we couldn't be more excited to be right now in this present moment with such a constellation, even a galaxy of, um, of, of people around the world that are ready. They're trained, they're prepared, they're skilled, they've done the work, they've got the, the, themselves into a situation to really contribute to this emerging um, unity consciousness uh, and that really can help change everything on our world uh, as we as we come together as one family so really excited to be here at one earth life thank you for uh, inviting me in and unity earth look forward to talking to you about world unity week which is coming up just next month uh, in, in a few moments and it's been amazing to be on this journey with brother john uh, since we were together in ethiopia back at the beginning of 2018 and watch the emergence of the sign network and you know the hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of organizations that are in that field so together uh you know there's something something really truly transformational is rising through all of us uh and it's a very profound moment to be here with you thank you chris thank you ben it's great to um hear your passion and and your work and the tide that rises all boats i think that's what that's i can definitely feel that happening and john share a little bit about your work 
Well, yeah, thank you, Chris, for having us here and for One Earth Live. This is uh, another stop on this journey that we're on. And I thought Ben did such a great job of really not only uh, communicating about it, but I've lived it. I've experienced it. I've been there. I know what it was like to arrive in Shashamani as a, such a diverse expression of humanity rising right now. And not only has been um, led the way, but the experience of that unity and diversity is really profound. It goes beyond something we understand conceptually. And that's why I'm so excited at this crazy moment we find ourselves, because we're all in the same place. We're able to now find each other in this world, this virtual world, and uniting and doing these kinds of examples of what is unity in action? What is unprecedented unified action? How do we actually unite and unify? So. It's true, like Ben said, we went to uh, Ethiopia as part of World Interfaith Harmony Week as part of the Compassion Games. So we've for a long time been envisioning a world where you turn that empathy into action. But we felt that we needed to go beyond just individually and collectively doing this at another level. And that birthed this synergized impact network exchange, this idea of an alliance. And that's been the most inspiring example of what you can do when trust is present. So a whole bunch of us, and now including One Earth Live and what you're doing, Chris, are you know, rising to this moment and realizing that if we um, share in ways we haven't before, we actually can strengthen and support each other, that we are better together. And cooperation for the common good can start to take some tactical, tangible ways. And one of the ways is we're making waves. And like this experience that we're having here, now can be shared throughout a syndicated network through sign. So many, many more people will realize what's happening. We're putting out the call together to say this is the time. It's incredible, the suffering in the world. It's unimaginable. And for those of us who have our health, it's almost imperative that we come back better and that we unite in ways we haven't before, not just in word, but really in deed. And that's what the unity earth experience has been for me. And that's what sign is all about. And we keep expanding in creative ways to do this kind of collaborative learning. We haven't figured it all out, but it's this innovation together and this unprecedented unity in action. Like uncle chief Phil Lane, my partner in all this reminds us we are one human family and to have indigenous wisdom at the core and have music inspiring us and the words of so many wise folks to learn from, there's no excuse. We do need to choose to come together like never before. So I'm grateful to One Earth Live for inviting us in and we're excited to be a part of it. And like Ben was saying, there's many examples of people uniting. World Unity Week is coming in June, Humanity Rising, Ubiquity University is doing. There's so many ways that we could tap into each other right now and be there in support of each other. Amazing, yeah, it's like, like you know, I'm like like Ben, I come from Australia and you know, it's like when you're surfing, there's always a good set, you know, and we call it a set. It's not just one wave, but it's like a few waves coming. I'm feeling I'm feeling this this sort of like perfect set of waves coming. So, you know, like this weekend we're doing one earth live, but then there's also an amazing, you know, series of events and activations happening during the whole year leading leading forward. And you you both are definitely leading that um, leading the way there. But, you know, what really excited me, um, which was, I thought, paradigm shifting, if you like, you know, was when, sign, when I heard about Sign Network and this, this sense of trust. And I want you to share, because I think that's the essence of how we make this leap to the next, to the next level. And we don't return to business as usual, is this sense of deep trust. So I'd love you to share a little bit about that, John, just how that works in Sign Network, because it's a great example on a global level. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, there's a shared value. There's a lot of people who recognize that we can do a lot more together than we could do apart. But to create the, the agreements, you need the accountability, integrity, and the transparency necessary. And the social media world is something that we all are actively engaged in. And we've built these assets, if you will, these channels, these pages, these groups, but thinking initially for ourselves. Well, now let's say we connect them up together and let's start sharing with each other, polishing and pruning. So we're all getting stronger in the process, right? So the way Sign Network's uh, syndicate works here is that we're an admin on multiple pages, hundreds of pages. And when a member goes live, like One Earth Live or when Unity 
Earth does with World Unity Week, we'll be doing many of these waves. Members agree to share them. So in that way, the reach is much greater than we could do by ourselves. And, but we also engage in those streams. We're there for each other. We're learning about each other. There's no shortcut to what it takes to synergize. In fact, Compassion Games is launching the Synergy Games as a way to put this front and center, that the idea that if we take the time to connect with each other, and if we knew, there's new structures emerging, like World Unity Week is gonna allow for people to engage with each other, not just festivals and traditional presentation model, but literally make space for people to connect with each other, discover each other, start to think strategically how our individual interests can be recast as collective interests and common interests, and we can start to unify to achieve these goals that we all need to come back better. So sign is, lying, is relying on this trusted sharing. I mean, in that space, uh, synchronously and asynchronously, there's many, many things we could do that we already have the power with. We just need to have the agreements and learn how to make those agreements in a healthy way and maintain them. Awesome. Um, I've, you've shared a little bit of, you know, you've touched on a little bit about what's coming up for Unity Week. Ben, maybe you can give us a little bit of a, a, a download on what's happening, what's, what's coming. I mean, a, a, it's a big gathering that's happening for a whole week. Can you share a little bit more? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Chris, and thanks, John. Uh, World Unity Week is from June 20 to 27, so just a month away. Uh, and it's really, I think you described it, Chris, best as a constellation of amazing things. Uh, I'm really going to grab that phrase and run with it. But it, look, it's starting with the solstice, obviously, Indigenous, uh, very important celebration and blessing, uh, summer in the Northern Hemisphere, winter here in the Southern Hemisphere, uh, building up through um, eight days uh, of incredible events, including it's the United Nations International Day of Yoga, um, leading into a lot of open source content, as John has described in the, in the design of it and the architecture of it. But it's literally hundreds of organisations coming together to co-convene World Unity Week uh, around the planet. And itself is a stepping stone towards September, which is the International Day of Peace. And of course, we're working all together for, for the uh, Peace Weekend and series of events, three days to change the world from September 19 to 21. So World Unity Week is a step towards that. Uh, and it is one of some of the big um, pieces that are included. 20th birthday of our dear friends at the United Religions Initiative, one of the, certainly the world's biggest grassroots interfaith organization in over 100 countries with 1,000 organizations represented. And then we are then celebrating on the last day of World in, uh, Unity Week, uh, the 75th anniversary of the signing of the UN Charter, which begins We the Peoples of the United Nations. So it's a great legacy for us to build on as the World Unity Movement continues to grow and continues to get empowered. World Unity Week is an opportunity, Chris, to convene all the different voices and all the different uh, people that are doing work in ecology, in spirituality, intercultural, visionary arts, um, you know, conscious business, so many other spaces and places that are coming together to show up so that we can see how many we are. And when we see how many we are, that is then really the dawning of the realization that, hey, we can cross this threshold from where we've been to where we're going. So World Unity Week, as John has said, it's another step on the road. Uh, it starts on the 20th of June. You can go to worldunityweek.com uh, and get involved. And we are super excited to be partnering with this vast constellation, to be co-collaborating with vast constellation of organizations for that. So, and as John said also, it's a place where people come in and, and, and can speak and there's workshops and there's opportunities to learn, there's opportunities to speak and opportunities to share. Um, so it's a real opportunity as we convene the beginning of the next stage of our movement together. Uh, and as we get ready for September and showing up uh, on the world stage with historic force in September. And World Unity Week is a step towards that. And we're delighted to be partnering with you and with everybody uh, who's coming forward into that space. Thanks, uh, Ben. Yeah, we're excited with Uplift. You know, we have the Global Days of Unity, which is going to be happening on that very first weekend of World Unity Week. So we're really looking forward to, to being part of this sort of bigger collaboration, this bigger co-creation of, of spreading the message of unity, peace and love. So yeah, it's exciting. Um, I have another question for you both. This uh -huh. is more a question about just your personal feelings of the moment in time. I mean, there's so much breaking through right now, but you know, through this breakdown, it's so easy to focus on the breakdown, you know, with the COVID-19 and this big isolation moment. But what is really breaking through? What, what, what are you feeling is breaking through for humanity at this time? 
Well, uh, we've all never been at a spot like this and that we're all there together is unprecedented. Mm -hmm. Everybody on this planet has been affected. Therefore, hopefully we can affect everyone on this planet. And it requires, um, for me, great humility to realize, my gosh, there are people that are really suffering. And then there's also people like me who dreamt that one day we would pause and we would stop to reconsider the direction we're headed and use this as a real moment to do a values clarification. That you see nature responding as it is. And maybe, and I'm gonna eat less meat. You know, I've decided that I, I, I can't expect the world to change unless I'm gonna change. So being healthy, being kind, being better, that's the theme of the synergy games that love wins that we can choose in this moment. We're gonna find some new structures to convene online in ways we haven't before. It's amazing that we have the connectivity that we do. That's for me the most promising thing is that all of a sudden we actually can come together like we haven't been able to before. This kind of superpower, the civil society rising, you know, is this is all within our reach now, but we've never been here before. So I've, I'm, I'm living in awe, I, I, you know, every now and then a couple times a day I say, wow, Something shows up that reminds me that um, I don't know who's orchestrating this, but this is a big number. You know, that I, I was just the last thing. I, it's Gilligan's Island. Did you guys have Gilligan's Island in Australia? Yeah, 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 yeah. we did. I loved it. <laughs> they went on this three hour tour, and then all of a sudden, every, you know, it's for me, it's kind of like Martin Luther King says, you know, we may have come on different ships, but we're all in the same boat now. And here we've gone on this three hour tour up till now. And then where are we? We're in a new world. So um, it's, it's astounding. And you find this, you're finding this, um, John, with all the orgs as well, because you're dealing with so many. I mean, is that the same sort of sentiment that's coming through strongly? Loud and clear. I mean, loud and clear. Everybody realizes it's this duality. On one hand, incredible suffering, but also incredible promise and possibility. And we do not want to miss this chance. Right. Ben, what are your thoughts on, on what's breaking through right now? Oh, yeah. The, the, whole, the whole climate, the whole climate has, has shifted, you know, um, irreversibly. I think that, uh, you know, people always had certain barriers to cooperation and synergy and, you know, what's mine and, uh, and I don't necessarily want to dilute that by getting too close to what's yours. And so that barrier has been here. <clears throat> the appetite for synergy has been like this, but now it's like it shifted so much. The appetite for cooperation, everyone's a yes. You know, when, when somebody, when, the, when an opportunity to really advance the cause or the movement as, as a whole, beyond our own organizational structures, since, you know, March, <clears throat> the shift that John uh, is speaking about and Chris that you're talking into, Absolutely profound. I mean, this is the most, I think, um, optimistic thing we see is that we're learning to work together as teams in a trans organizational way. We've all been, you know, organizations have been doing well to build their internal teams, but now we are actually getting that supra, you know, organization. It doesn't belong to anyone's brand. You know, there's no board that represents it, uh, certainly that we can see, uh, but it exists. And we're starting to feel into that super organization of where are we going? Like John said, who's orchestrating this? I think that's a, there's, there is an unseen intelligence and mind behind this that we are responding to now. And the, and the global shutdown situation, the pandemic situation has just shifted so that pe the people's motivation, our motivation to collaborate and to come together and to drop what was holding us separate from each other is diminishing and falling away. And our desire to embrace each other and to lift each other and to really walk home hand in hand, heart to heart is really our greatest asset. So it's, um, I mean, tremendously exciting. You see it here with One Earth Live. You see all of these festivals coming together to collaborate. When did that ever happen? Right. So in the sense of you can see this is the beginning of the new way of doing things that's going to really accelerate our movement organically. It's not coming from some one voice or one leader or one organization. It's coming from all of us collectively rising together. So it's, it's, it's happening. It's here. It's real. Uh, and we're, we're right in the middle of it in ground zero. So 
Yeah, it's uh, and what Sign is doing, pioneering work to really advance the cause for synergy and cooperation and that inter organizational teamwork. And we're just going to get better and better at it as we practice. And when we come out for World Unity Week, that'll be another dress rehearsal as we work together with all these organizations. And then, of course, we show up in September. And I feel, so many of us feel, and so many visionaries have seen that date in September as being a watershed moment for our planet, for our consciousness on this planet. So we're, we're, we're you know, the, the, that beginning is near. The beginning is near. And I think this way of really how we're learning to work together and cooperate is the engine that's driving. Love it. Thank you. That's a, yeah. I can feel it. So, you know, I mean, we're, you know, some people, some people will say we're in a bubble, right? Because we're, you know, even though it's a pretty big bubble of quite diverse elements, but do you feel it happening within the mainstream? I mean, is, is this, is this emergent new energy really coming through uh, in, in your, have, have you, have you experienced that for the mainstream? Hmm. Well, I was wondering the other day, you know, what is the mainstream these days? Because when you ask people where they get their information, a lot of it's from social media, you know, and the whole way that um, disinformation has been introduced. I mean, we're going to have to rethink our information ecology, but connecting up, you know, and building that collective capacity, you know, we only need 40 million people, you know, or 50 million, whatever. I mean, 10% of what's on Facebook kind of thing. I mean, it, it's hard to know what the mainstream, you know, there's a cynicism we're all used to. That's always going to be there. We've never been here before. But I see this as we call this the by 2030 decade. That so many goals have been set. Um, the whole sustainable development goals the whole vision for what needs to happen for climate. I mean, that, you know, there's enough of us and the bottom up vision, the civil society rising, the use of the technology to convene. Um, you know, I just don't know that the mainstream, whatever the mainstream is, you know, how, how, how to play to that as much as I know how to work with you, Chris. I know how to work with you, Ben. I know how to work with, you know, the people that are showing up and make it work. And we'll keep working at it to make sure that there's a, the, you know, the influence that there needs to be to deal with the power over. There are forces that need to change. We know it. Politically, the collapsing of systems we're seeing, you know, the climate, the whole issue. I mean, there's, there's challenges here. But I, 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 you know, I don't know how, how you feel about the mainstream, Ben, but it seems elusive in some crazy way. Well, it's certainly, uh, you, you know, it's not a monolithic something. It's, uh, it's a very complicated, you know, se selection of demographics right around the world in different countries. But one thing we know is that uh, everybody's been affected by this pandemic, by this shutdown and by this global pause. Um, and I think a huge majority of people are thinking through our choices. Uh, it's that crisis moment that we face. So, you know, you see it in individual lives and people come to a crisis moment or, you know, they hit rock bottom and then you've got a choice. You either make the change uh decisions choices and actions or, or, or you can self-destruct that's a choice we have collectively and we're not without some say in it the work of one earth live and the work of sign and the work of these other organizations are getting a positive message out there saying we we have a, we have a say in this matter john just shared a commitment for him to uh to for him it's to eat less meat for me it's going to be to travel less uh, international unnecessary you know non-essential travel you know burning fossil fuels and carbon imprint and I think if uh, hundreds of millions of people make those choices, they don't need to be connected to the consciousness movement. They don't need to be connected to the you know, light workers or they don't need to be uh, coming from any particular uh, section or segment to make those choices that I want more time with my family. I don't need to strive just for money and for wealth. Uh, I'm going to be more contemplative. I'm going to have less of an impact on the planet. That's mainstream. Uh, and if millions and hundreds of millions and maybe billions of people make that choice, then that's going to have an extraordinarily powerful impact on the direction. And also, let's remember that, you know, there is a stream of consciousness. There is a newer sphere. There is something beyond the material here that we're impacting. With the music coming out from One Earth Live these days, this weekend, you know, it's going all around the planet. With the work that we do, it has an effect on that collective um, mind of humanity and of collective consciousness. So all of these incremental decisions and commitments and uh, positive energies going out there can have a huge and do have a huge impact. So I think, you know, we can infect 
and I use that word deliberately, the, the mind stream of humanity with positivity, with uh, sincerity, with compassion, uh, and with responsibility, uh, and to make that U-turn, and to make that U-turn. It doesn't mean it's going to be easy, uh, but we have to hold each other accountable. We have to hold each other through this process, uh, and we are not without a say in what happens next. And that's really, I think, the message that we really want to hold each other up in. Beautiful, Ben. You know, yeah. I, I have the same feeling about the word mainstream. It's, it's sort of an old paradigm in a way. It's us and them. For me, there's only one mainstream, and it's the mainstream of love. And that's really the stream that keeps all humanity together. That's the mainstream, actually. So I think, <laughs> cool. Cool. I think what's happened for me right now in the world is this whole process or like through, through the COVID is that we've had this reset of coming home to our families, you know, being, being at home. I mean, look at us, we're all at home and we're, we're having a jam, you know, and this sense of coming home is, is a, I think, that first little seed of coming home to ourselves, our families, and then coming home to our Mother Earth and taking care of our Mother Earth and just, you know, just having this deep reflection moment on, okay, well, how do we, how do we move forward from here as a, as, a, as a family, as a global family? So, yeah, this is amazing. So thanks for sharing. It's, really, it's been amazing having you both here on the One Earth Live weekend. And I really appreciate. And I want you both just to make one more um, invitation, if you like, to the global audience today about, about what's coming so we can, we can bookmark that. All right. Well, thanks, Chris. And uh, we invite you all to come uh, and, and really um, participate as participants and as co-creators in World Unity Week, June 20 to 27, global series uh, of events around the world uh, and convening the conversation uh, in response to uh, the current moment and getting ready for what happens in September. Worldunityweek.com. You can go there. You can uh, get involved. You can see the schedule. Uh, and we'd love to invite the whole One Earth uh, One Earth Live family to come and join us uh, in World Unity Week as we scale up towards really, um, you know, becoming something unstoppable together. Uh, we look forward to seeing you there in World Unity Week next month. Thank you. John, would you like to share a few last closing words? Well, we'll be there and so will, you know, the Sci Network. Um, not to be missed, this is our moment. So to learn more about SINE, it's S-I-N-E dot network. We're Synergized Impact Network Exchange. But I, um, I'm excited about what One Earth Live is doing. We're excited about these waves, as you said, Chris. It's exactly like that. What we're doing for World Unity Week is a step towards Peace Weekend in September and then beyond. We're in this unknown. And um, I wouldn't want to be there with anybody else. So we're going to climb this mountain together. Love you, Ben. I just, you know, I'm going to hold you to less travel, hold me to less meat. We just all kind of, <laughs> yeah, you spend more time at home, Chris. I mean, that's what it's about. It's really yeah. in the direction. You know, well, we are so looking going. forward to taking the energy from this weekend into World Unity Week, into Global Days of Unity, that first weekend. So we want to invite the whole global audience to please, please come on this incredible, like you said, this boat, yes. you know, that's, that's, that's now, you know, traveling. <laughs> So we invite everybody. And thank you both for, for, for joining. We really appreciate it. Fabulous. Wonderful. Thank you, Chris. It was, was a pleasure to be here with you and John. Yeah, same here. Awesome. Thank you. Bye-bye. Hi, everyone. Welcome. 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 Namaste. Welcome to the Global Days of Unity. From the minute that I heard about Global Days of Unity, I understood that it was the thing for this time. The incredible coming together of people, music, song, prayer, that it's like a, a massive infusion of energy into consciousness, into the world. And what I love about it is it's completely accessible by anyone, anywhere. And let's create that togetherness and that cohesion third weekend of every month. Deep inhale to the center. Today at this session, we have a wonderful panel, wonderful presenters. Om Namah Shivaya. 
brings together a unity that I don't think has ever really truly been done correctly. And just learning about the initiative makes my heart warm. Put our thought into it and put intention into it. It can just be so powerful and can become so huge and have such a big impact. I think what inspires me the most about the Global Days of Unity initiative is the experimental aspect of it, right? Like this thing has never been done before. We've tried so many different things. We haven't tried people coming together with a, a sense of intention and joy. Let's try something new. Let's see what humanity can be. And I'm excited about that possibility. If we send out love, then the world responds with love. So in Global Days of Unity, just imagine the consequence of a large number of people sending out wonderful thoughts of love, peace, and harmony because we can change this planet just by the thinking of those wonderful thoughts. And in community, we re-empower each other, but we can also empower the world. I want to invite you to the third weekend of every month. Let us be together to the Global Days of Unity. Welcome home.